So good evening, everybody. Welcome to, to uh, Virtual Coaches College. Uh, it's Thursday, the 22nd of October in 2020. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, workforce development, uh, specifically the workforce pathway. Um, we're going to have guests and people to talk from our CTE division, uh, James Krause, he, he runs that. Our business division, um, or I should say department, excuse me, our cybersecurity department, uh, I'll talk to that. I used to be an instructor down there. Our agricultural department, uh, aviation department, and nursing department, and uh, fire science, and MA specifically is, is, is who we'll have represented. If I missed anybody, my apologies, folks. You can yell at me later, okay? So, like I said, my name is Carl Verfour. I'm the assistant dean for workforce development here at Cochise College. And uh, for those of you who are just coming in or who are thinking about coming to Cochise College, it may be a little new hearing that workforce development thing and what exactly that is. Um, workforce development, we're looking to get people out and actually employed without having to go on, to be blunt, to even more college. Um, my job here, as far as I'm concerned, is to find you a job. And uh, if you want to go on to a four-year university, that's fine. Uh, not saying you shouldn't, not saying you can't. But uh, there are plenty of jobs out there that don't require that. Um, in fact, uh, Ms. Robin Martin, who, who does our marketing, gave me a nice little statistic here, and I'm sure it's probably the latest, greatest one. 51% uh, of jobs in Arizona that required skills and training beyond high school, but do not need a four-year degree. Think about it, folks. That's over half the jobs that are out there. So what we're talking about specifically is a two-year degrees, associate degrees, or B, certificates and, and, and certificate programs. And all of our folks here are gonna talk about some very specific ones about that. Um, Cochise College has, has over 50 of these specific types of programs and you're gonna hear about a lot of them tonight. And at the end of this, um, Ms. Martin is gonna put in a, a link for you guys to, that's gonna give all the talking points from all the speakers that we have tonight. So don't leave yet, okay? hang out with us and uh, guarantee you'll learn something. So um, besides that, I think I'll go ahead and introduce our first person because I want to hear what he has to say. Um, James, would you like to go ahead and start? Sure. So Mike's unmuted, everybody can hear me? Got it. Good, awesome. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is James Krause. I'm CTE department chair for Cochise College and Automotive Center, uh, our automotive program coordinator. Um, so kind of kind of carries a, a big badge. There's quite a few departments in CTE, um, specific ones that, that I kind of look over is automotive technology, building construction, carpentry, the culinary department, welding department, um, HVAC, drafting, engineering. So those are kind of my specific ones that, that I keep an eye on and, and help um, bring students in and, and try and keep the programs going. So with that, what I'd like to do is just show a real quick video. Um, it's going to include other departments to it, but it's a, it's a really great video that Coaches College has put together just to give you a really good visual of a lot of stuff that we have going on at Coaches College. So. So the, so the music was just to get you rolling and then boom, and surprise you with the video. Anyway, that's the best part about going first is that you get to get all the hiccups out of the way. Um, but again, this with that video, so a great video, it really shows a lot of excitement that we have in our CTE programs. They're very diverse. And um, the best part about CTE is that they're, they're really geared to get the students through and get them into the workforce. So I think all of us really kind of understand right now that there's a shortage for CTE type employees or, or technology type people. And uh, 
Cochise College, I, I believe, is really one of the best when it comes to that type of a program. So um, we've got some really exciting news. Like I said, I'm uh, overseeing the, the automotive department. We've got a brand new facility um, coming in. It's uh, about a 24,000 square foot facility. Going to be brand spanking new. We've got a very successful welding program, our culinary programs. Um, just in that video, you can see that it's a lot of fun. You get a lot of hands on. Um, something else that I wanted to share with you. Um, I, I guess I'll stop right now. Does anybody have any specific questions of any of the departments that I've just talked about or just have introduced? If not, what I want to do real quick is um, share another screen with you. And it's basically just our homepage um, because I get a lot of questions of where do I go? Who do I talk to? What do I need to do to, to find out about these programs? Um, and let me share it. Everybody see the home screen now? Okay. So lots of information just right on this front page that sometimes students just aren't aware of or prospective students are, aren't aware of. And if we really wanted to know about some of our programs, there's a quick tab here that we can click on. If we wanna look at class schedules for those programs, we can do that. So let me just click on this one real quick. And a lot of CTE, not all, but a lot of CTE is um, in the industry tab. And if I click on that, here's a list of all the programs in that industry tab for career technical education. And you can see that we've got um, welding from the top from aerospace welding, our automotive technology, our building construction, carpentry. This is, these are culinary classes. If you just click on one of these and I'm gonna click on automotive, it's gonna take you to the screen that has our certificate page and our degree map page. And it's going to give you the classes that you need to take for the certificate. It will also give you the classes that you would need for the degree program. Let me back out of this just one second. Too far. I knew I'd do that. The other questions are, a lot of questions that I get too is, is well, how much does it cost? What, what is it gonna cost to get to Coaches College? And with so many diverse departments and, and different types of fees and, and stuff like that, right here in the middle of the page, there's a tab that states paying for college. And you click on this one. Oh, a little better. Down here, we have our tab that have our tuition fees, some information on waivers, scholarship payment options. And I, what I found is a lot of students just don't know that this is there, that they can really investigate on their own. Um, and if not, what I would suggest is that you get a hold of an advisor and a navigator and they'll sit down with you. And anybody in the CTM part, department, all of our instructors are more than willing to give you a tour of their facility talk to you about some more information about CTE. And with that, if there's any questions, I'll answer them. If not, it's just a really exciting um, department program for Coaches College. With that, I'm kind of out of what I need to cover, I think, unless anybody has questions. No question? No. All right, thanks, James. I appreciate it. So folks, remember, um, if, if How's this, to put it simply, if you're interested in doing something with your hands, okay, James is the guy you want to talk to. So if it's automotive, if it's welding, if it's construction, if it's culinary, if, if, if you want to do something, you don't want to sit in your chair, um, James is the guy that you want to see. So not to say that you don't want to talk to all these other nice people, but if, if, if that's who you are, then that's where we want to go. So next we're going to move on to business. It's Ms. Margarita Fate. Um, she's the chair for the business department. Yeah, All right. Well, anyway, I'm Margarita Fate and uh, faculty for the business. We've got 
a secret in our department. It's a very well kept secret. And what is that secret? It is that we have that you can earn a management degree, which is business, you know, a, a business management degree, associate of applied science degree. And you can use that certificate and apply that to the degree plan. So when you graduate with a degree in management, you'll have a certificate and you'll have your management degree. What kind of certificates? They're automotive, they're early childhood care, they're fire science, they're um, unmanned aircraft, virtual reality, welding, or any other certificates that the dean will approve. So you're gonna have a certificate and then you're going to have a degree, which is very, very cool. So um, what does management degree do for you? Well, it, it prepares you uh, for the employment and um, it's gonna prepare you to be a good employee or an employer, either way. You're gonna have all these management classes, skills, and you're going to have your certificates if you choose to. So what are you going to learn? You're going to learn all about the soft skills. You're going to learn about legal environment of business, HR. You're going to learn about marketing, management, uh, how to start a business. You're going to learn a little bit of accounting. It's, it's going, you know, the things that you're going to need to be successful in the business environment. So regardless, you know, of the degree you're, you're going to take, whether it's going to be psychology, whether it's going to be nursing or whatever it is, whatever that is, you're still going to need some business classes. And I am going to just encourage you to take some business classes so you'll know about these skills that are going to be necessary to make you successful. We also have an entrepreneur a, a certificate in our department. All right. It, uh, it will it will help you be an entrepreneur or develop those entrepreneur skills that are necessary if you want to you know, have a business. So uh, we also have a new supply chain management certificate and you can complete that in one year, two semesters. So it's 16 credits. Um, and so you can take two classes, first eight weeks second eight weeks, one, and then two and one, and you're done and you have that certificate. So, um, and this is a booming, booming industry. Um, I suggest that, um, that you take this certificate and also go for your management degree as well. So, and in this uh, supply chain certificate, you're going to learn a little bit about, oh, um, supply chain technology, transportation, traffic, uh, purchasing, all those things. So if you have any questions, please email me or call me. Um, if you are, we're here to help you in this field of business and I hope to see you in some business classes. Thanks, Margarita. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, any questions? I do. You do. No, you can't ask any questions, Carl. <laughs> Just, you're the moderator. <laughs> is that still only two years, even with a certificate built in? I'm sorry? The business management degree, is that still only two years, even with a certificate built well, in? Well, you're coming. Can everybody hear that? I'm having a hard time. It must be me. Okay. Say okay, that again. Margarita. I'll come down and see it, and I'll post it in the chat later. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, you're having computer issues. So, folks... Our next one we're going to move on to is cybersecurity, and that's going to end up being me. Um, I, I used to be an instructor down in cybersecurity. So for those of you who are actually interested in that, um, everything that we do down there, and I'm going to talk about the CIS division as a whole some. Um, Robin, did they cover CIS as a whole last night? They did. Then I'll talk cybersecurity specific. So for those of you who don't know, we just built a brand new cybersecurity center at our downtown center where, where all these lovely ladies from nursing are. So, and, and as you talk to them, we're, they gave us a little space in the back. So we built this brand new cybersecurity center. And it's kind of an amazing thing because we're rewriting our curriculum right now to actually match what we're able to do. And the capacity that we're building into that cyber program is at a level that it's not 
how's this? There's not another community college in the United States that teaches to the level that we do in our cybersecurity program or that we're moving towards. Um, we're now fully integrated with the University of Arizona South, CAST, who's also here on our campus. And that's kind of a big deal because right now CAST is one of the very few uh, uh, certified centers of academic excellence by the National Security Administration. So as we'll become certified, hopefully, by the National Security Administration next year, we'll also be a certified in institution of excellence or, or academy of excellence. Um, that's kind of a big thing when you start talking about getting a job in this. Cyber is one of those fields where you don't have to worry quite so much about getting a job. It is the single fastest growing jobs, job segment on the planet Earth right now. Um, <laughs> it's expected to have well over 600% growth in the next 10 years. And that's, the, the, that, that's a crazy amount of growth. Um, there's jobs everywhere for it. Now, it's not that we tailor ours to uh, working up here on Fort Huachuca, but in essence, we try to. Um, if you graduate with one of our cybersecurity degrees, you will step out uh, more than ready to, to immediately join the job force at, at a journeyman or entry level, but it also prepares you for going on to any bachelor's program in these United States um, as the bachelor's program that we've written it to go into is considered, it's number one or two, depending on who you're talking to. So it's, it's, it's a good program and we've written ours to go directly into theirs. So it's challenging, and then I have a again, but what you're going to learn oh, is more than you're going to learn anywhere else. So if you're up to it, please feel free. Um, in fact, there is one statistic that got thrown in here. Just one second. So Cybersecurity Ventures predicts there will be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs in uh, by the end of 2021. So you're talking about three and a half million empty jobs. Folks, that's, that's pretty easy to walk into. Um, the department chair, Mr. Gilmet, couldn't be here tonight, but that's who you would contact, and his contact information will be in the document that we're going to throw in the chat at the very end. So does anyone have any questions reference cybersecurity? It's a good way to earn a lot of money, I'm just saying. I, I do. Is it a certificate or is it a, a degree? Oh, no, ma'am, it's a full degree. We don't offer a certificate in cybersecurity. Um, I did. Uh, do I have another second, Robin? Can I take another minute and talk? Right next to cybersecurity center, the ladies in nursing here gave us another little room that we stuck on in the back. And we did open another certificate program back there. It's not cybersecurity, but it's virtual reality content development. So it's actually coding virtual reality, not coding games. It's actually creating for business applications, virtual reality applications. Um, it's also one of the faster growing segments. Um, it is quite amazing. I was in there today and I'll tell you, I, I took a tour of people through, a, a very small tour, and it's kind of incredible when you see, uh, we just literally came into Zoom and uh, we made it into a drive-in movie theater instead. So watching a Zoom screen that's a drive-in movie theater that's 120 feet across, it's, it's really kind of amazing when you throw that into stereo sound too. But if you're at all interested in virtual reality content development, uh, my info will be in here and, and you can please contact me directly. So thank you for giving me the next minute, I appreciate it. Folks, if there's no questions, I'm going to move on to Dr. Paul Sebesta. He runs our agriculture department and He's brilliant. So, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they won't think I'm so brilliant after my presentation, Carl. So, thank you very much, Carl, and to the to the prospective students that are here with us tonight. Thank you very much for sharing uh, part of your Thursday evening with you. So, without further ado, and because we're under a time limit, I'm going to share my screen and use a, a few PowerPoint slides to talk with you about the agriculture program. So, let's get that going. All right, so hopefully you can see that. So for the students, my contact information is on the slide. Please feel free if you have any questions about the agriculture program, don't hesitate to drop me an email or uh, give me a telephone call. 
uh, and I'd be glad to talk with you about the agriculture program and the careers that are available to you with a, a degree in agriculture. So when we talk about agriculture and we ask people to think about agriculture, many times people will think about agriculture as a very hot and dirty job out in the sun, growing crops, harvesting produce, raising livestock. And certainly that is part of agriculture. That's a significant part of agriculture. But I, as an agricultural scientist, tend to think of agriculture as something much more than that. And the innovation of American agriculture touches the lives of every American every day in ways that you don't even know. And you don't even know this, where these things came from. And you don't even equate these with agriculture. What am I talking about? A few of these are examples. If you've taken penicillin, the mass production of penicillin was developed by agricultural scientists. If you've wondered about cutting an apple on your kitchen table and leaving it sitting there and it turns dark after a while, and while, while the slices at, at McDonald's and other places do not turn brown, there is a product on those apples that was developed by an agricultural research scientist. We all wear permanent press shirts. That is a product of agricultural science. We print things on our inkjet printers. The inkjet, the, the base of that inkjet ink is actually soy, soybean oil. And, and the, the, an agricultural scientist developed the technology for soy ink. And that technology is used in inkjet printers and printing newspapers. If you've gone out into the woods in the Coronado National Forest and sprayed insect repellent on you, the DEET in the insect repellent is a product of agricultural research. Roma tomatoes, if, you're, if you or your, your, your family use Roma tomatoes to make their tomato sauce, that is a product of agriculture research. My favorite condiment is sriracha. Sriracha, there is a key ingredient in every bottle of salad dressing and condiment marketed around the world, and that is xanthan gum. And that improves the flowability of these products. That was developed by agriculture research. And I'm saving the best for last, and that is Huggies diapers. If you have used disposable diapers, the, the super absorb, absorbent starch material that is that was the, the technology that, that, that gave birth to the whole industry of disposable diapers is a technology that was developed by an agricultural research scientist. And that technology is called super slurper. Uh, and so I could talk about the science behind all of these things for hours, but we're short on time, so let's move on. So those technologies were yesterday, but what about tomorrow? What will the agriculture of the future look like? Well, we know one thing for sure, that, that our population is growing. And in, in your lifetime, students, in 30 short years, we're gonna have 2.3 billion more people on this earth to feed and to clothe and to house and to, and to have water for. And the amazing statistic is that we will need to produce the same amount of food in the next four decades as we produced over the last 8,000 years combined. And we're going to need to increase our agriculture production by 70% to meet that goal. And we'll have fewer resources to do that because those 3 billion more people will need land to live on, they'll need land for other things and they'll need other resources. So how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna feed these 2.3 billion more people? And how are we going to produce that same amount of food that we produced in total the last 8,000 years in 40 short years? That's a tremendous, uh, tremendous statistic. That's a, a daunting statistic. Well, to meet this demand, we're going to need a full array of innovative solutions from the, the next generation of agricultural scientists, professionals, and producers. And hopefully one of you will think about, a, or all of you will think about careers in agriculture to help meet this, this growing need. So the future of agriculture will look like this. We'll have more drones and drone technology in our agriculture used every day. We'll have more robotics. In fact, there, there are scientists on the East Coast of the United States working on developing technologies and robots that will actually hand pick pieces of fruit off the tree. They'll map the tree and then the robots will hand pick that fruit to eliminate, eliminate the need for, a, for human labor. We'll be growing things in vertical, vertical spaces the, in, in some of our some of our Rust Belt cities, where there there are high straight, high you know, tall buildings uh, vacant, we'll be using those for vertical gardens, vertical production, and we'll have food products that we don't know that exists that will be created. 
few years ago, we had we had no idea about Beyond Meatballs or Beyond Beef, and now that 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 product is marketed in fast food restaurants and grocery stores across the United States. So we'll be inventing foods that don't even don't even know what those foods look like today that we'll invent tomorrow. So that is the future of agriculture, and I'm excited about being involved in the agriculture agriculture production and agricultural sciences. So our careers in agriculture, I hope I've stressed, go well beyond that traditional farming and ranching. Yes, farming and ranching is part of it, but agriculture is so much more. So if you love the science like I do, if you like working outside like I do, I'm trained as a crop geneticist. Wheat was my crop of interest, and I've worked across in agriculture across the United States. And I like being outside. So if you like science, if you like crops and animals, if you like working outside and natural resources, and you want to contribute to the worldwide food supply, Pursuing a career in agriculture will provide you, I guarantee, with a challenging, rewarding, and fulfilling future. So where does your future begin? Well, number one, it begins with a good education. I can't stress that enough. And if you want an education in agriculture, a Cochise College is a great place to start that agricultural program degree. So what does our agriculture program look like? It's a very, really small program. There are four faculty members. Three of those faculty members are part-time. I'm the only full-time faculty member. But that fact that this faculty has over 60 years of combined experience in agriculture, both in the arid Southwest and across the United States. Uh, thankfully to Cochise College and the generosity of Cochise College administrators, we have developed a and finished construction of a large commercial sized teaching greenhouse that's pictured here on the Douglas campus. We're ramping that up this spring. Uh, so we can start using that to grow, to grow plants for various uses and to teach various classes in that greenhouse. We have AAS degrees in animal science and crop science. We have 16 credit certificates if you don't want to go to school for the full two years to get that AAS degree. We have uh, one year 16 credit certificates that are brand new in animal science, crop science, horticulture science, and industrial hemp. And we've launched a number of new classes. And those classes are landscape plants for the Southwest, pro plant propagation, industrial hemp, and irrigation and pest management. So I'm going to finish by hoping that some of you choose a career in agriculture to help feed and clothe the world. If you need more information, here's my contact information, and I look forward to hearing from you. So thank you for your attention, and thank you for spending some time with us today. Thanks, Carl. Of course. As always, Dr. Sebastian, you did not disappoint. Would you please unshare? Awesome. So, folks, you thought you had to go to drone school to play with drones. You don't. You can go to agricultural school and still play with drones. It's kind of amazing. So we're going to move on to something. I'm going to give a fast fact first. If, if, for those of you out there who didn't know, um, Cochise College has our own airport. Um, for those of you who didn't know something about that, we have an amazing aviation program that actually accompanies that airport. And, and Ms. Sandy Rosales is going to talk to you all about that. Ma'am, if you would, please. Good. good evening. I am Sandra Rosales and I am the aviation recruiter um, and advisor as well for our aviation department. Do any of you know what happened in 2001? 9-11. As a result of 9-11, um, the industry plummeted and it was put on hold. Even us at Cochise College, we were on hold for six months while the investigation was ongoing. Even, you know, like in 2001 that happened, that was huge, huge, huge for the entire world. And the industry was really, really down. Right now we're going through some big issues in the industry and in aviation. It has slowed down a little bit, but it will pick up like it did in 2001 because there is a demand in pilots. The FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration has put in place an age retirement for pilots, for airline pilots. The month that they turn 65, they are mandated to retire no matter what. What is that, what is that doing? There's putting a demand on pilots just between the years of uh, 2019, 2038, just in North America, we're gonna need over 200 pilots 
200,000 pilots, I'm sorry, just in North America. Wow. That's a lot, isn't it? The demand is still exists. Right now, Federal Express, UPS are doing the hires. Why? They're cargo companies. A lot of us are ordering a lot instead of going to the stores. So Federal Express and UPS are having to hire more people so we can get our goods. Okay. Why Cochise College? Well, Cochise College, I've been told that we've been a diamond in the rough. Why? Because we're in the middle of nowhere. We have our own airport. We own our own airport. We own our own fleet. We have our own mechanics in house. What does it do for us? The overhead for our department is not as much as it would be if we were have to outsource our training with somebody else or have a lease or payment on our airplanes. So since we don't have that, our cost is very low. It's one of the lowest in the nation. I've had students that have come from New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Vermont, Idaho, Washington, California, Colorado. Why? Because they can't believe our prices. What do they earn? They earn an associate's degree in professional pilot technology. What happens after that? They have a job as a flight instructor, because if you wanna go out and work at a, uh, an airline, you will have to have 1,250 hours. How are you going to accumulate those hours? By flight instructing. Every time you fly with um, your instructor, your instructor will also accumulate that hour. So you would have a job two years after, since you start college. The other thing is, is that we have the dormitories at the Douglas campus, which is about seven minute walk from the dorms to our building. Our students have a time because they have to be 30 minutes before they're assigned flight block. It's just right there, it's in our backyard. It's one of the best programs in the world. Um, and we have been able to hire most of our students that have gone through the CFI. And they've been staying with us for between 18 to 24 months. And then after that, they go into a regional airline and they start working for regional airlines as a commercial pilot. Within two years after that, they can upgrade into uh, major airlines, like for example, American Airlines, Delta, Southwest, and all of those airlines, you know, that they would have a job. So why Cochise College? We're the best. We've been told that we've had, right now I have, I wanna say the half of our students are second generations, which means that they went through our program. Now their kids are in our program or they have friends that went through our program that are interested and they wanna know what, where they got their training and they see coaches college and they're here with us. So if you have any questions, please feel free um, you can email at coaches that um, it's coaches at no aviation at coaches that edu, or you can call me directly 520-417-4165. And if you want to tour the facilities, more than welcome to show you. We can put you in a simulator, and also we can put you in an airplane for about thirty minutes. Wow! Yeah, it's fun. Then any of our staff members, if you ever are at the Douglas campus and you want to go, come down and we can put you in the simulators as well. If you have any questions, you can do now or after. Who has questions? Anyone? Oh, about how much would a, a pilot just leaving Cochise make about? Just leaving Cochise, if you're going to go to a regional airline, because that's probably where you would be going, you probably can start about sixty-five to $70,000. And yes. two years later, when you move on to like Delta or American? Yes. How much do you need? Um, 
you can probably be making about $300,000. I think I picked the wrong profession. That's what I said too. I'm on the wrong side of aviation. Yes, within five years that they start working in the airlines, the pilot can start making about $300,000. And as they go in the years and if they upgrade to captain, they can be making $500,000, $850,000. I mean, they're making money and I've known Actually, he's an alumni and he is a captain for JetBlue. He works 10 days out of the month. And I'm sure he makes pretty good money too. Yes. Yeah. Also, um, sorry, um, if you want to see what we are about, there is a video on YouTube and it's called Alive. A day in an aviation student, and it's a 11 minute video. It's great. It's going to showcase our campus, the Douglas campus, and our department and the flying, and it's absolutely amazing. Perfect. So that video is called A Day in the Life of, a, of an Aviation Student? Yes. Awesome. Perfect. It's a YouTube video. As always, ma'am, you are the greatest cheerleader we have for this school. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. It. So um, we're gonna move into one of our larger programs um, and, and it's nursing. So I'm gonna ask Ms. Ashline to go ahead and walk you guys through it. Ma'am, if you would, please. Thank you. I'm Melissa Ashline. I'm the director of nursing for um, the LPM program and the RM program for Cochise County College, not County, but college. Um, we offer three programs. The current one is the licensed practical nurse certificate. It's a 32 credit course. Um, after a year, you can actually test and work as a licensed practical nurse. It's, it's a really incredible program. Once you work a year as an LPN, we offer an LPN to RN transition course, which is approximately 55 credits long. Um, you actually will, at the end of that, become an RN with an associate degree. So that's really a great way to get your feet wet, get some experience, make some money, since that was a previous talk. Um, and then go come on back and get your RN. And then our pride and joy, of course, our biggest program is the registered nurse program. It is a 69 credit course. Um, once you do your prereqs, you do two years of nursing. And then you can actually go right into the field as a registered nurse. Um, once you get, obtain your license, you can go to any of the major universities that we have an articulation agreement with and get your bachelor's or your master's. So um, as far as job placement goes, we have 100% job placement in all of our programs as of right now. So we're very proud of that. So if you want to come and tour the downtown center and see cybersecurity, nursing, paramedicine, nursing assistant, MAs, and sometimes fire science at Build graces us, then please come on down. We'll be more than happy to give you a tour. Other than that, we look, I welcome all the future nursing students. Does anyone have questions? Also, culinary is in the downtown center. Yes, we are, and we benefit from that quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, ma'am, you have a 100% employment rate for your graduates. That is correct. I will also say that they are the only program at Coaches College that can say that. 100% straight out of the gate. 100%. So, yeah. There is a high demand for nursing and nursing assistants and paramedicine and MA students. Um, they get grabbed up pretty quick. <laughs> and that demand is, I'm assuming, going nowhere but up? That is correct. By 2022, there will be over a million jobs available. Oh, awesome. All righty, ma'am. We're going to we're gonna shift straight over into the certified nursing assistant. So, Ms. Vernon, if you could, please. Hi hey there, my name is Teresa Vernon and I'm the CNA coordinator for nursing assistant program. And the nursing assistant program is a one semester course. Uh, it is a certificate course. It is a five uh, credit certificate program uh, and it prepares the, the students to take their Arizona State Board of Nursing written and skills exam. The program has three parts to it. It has the classroom portion, it has the 
lab portion and it has the uh, clinical portion where you go out and work in the community at a facility with a vulnerable population. Um, the prerequisites of this program, you'd have to take the placement exams and reading uh, 092 or higher is one of the prerequisites and math placement into uh, math 081 or higher. Uh, also, we require that you take um, an American Heart Association first aid CPR um, class for healthcare providers. And there's brand new 2020 guidelines. So if you haven't taken it in a little while, uh, definitely check out the new guidelines for American Heart Association. Um, also, students have to obtain a fingerprint clearance card. Um, we do negative, uh, they need a negative random drug screen, uh, TB clearance, flu shot, and negative COVID before you before we're allowed into clinicals. Um, the Arizona State Board of Nursing will not grant certification to anyone with a felony that is less than three years old from date of discharge. It doesn't mean that if you have a felony on your record, you can't enter the program. It just means that you have to wait three years to make sure that you're on the straight and narrow. We're going to wait uh, three years um, in order to get your certification. It also requires that uh, documentation of citizenship or nationality for, for your citizenship um, or for the certification program. Uh, so if you're not sure where you can work as a nursing assistant, uh, a lot of people think that you can only work in long-term care, and that's not true. About only only about one third of all graduates uh, actually work in long-term care. The rest of them may work in a hospital, in a clinic, um, in home health. They may even work privately. So it's a great opportunity. A lot of good uh, jobs out there. Uh, one of the most exciting things about this is that um, this program, if you become a nursing assistant with your certification, you get a point toward entering the nursing program, and that's a big deal. And so that's really an important thing. Um, classes are typically two days a week. Uh, Mondays is usually always lecture, and then you pick what works for you out of the whether it's a Tuesday, a Wednesday, Thursday, or a Friday. Uh, so you pick what works for your schedule. Um, we have this program available in um, all four campuses. So Wilcox, uh, Benson, uh, Sierra Vista, and Douglas. So pretty close to home. And then uh, we also have the program in nine high schools. Uh, so if you if your you or your uh, child has program opportunity in in one of the high schools, they can earn dual enrollment credits, and they can go right to work. So in uh, about 16, 17 weeks, you go from the beginning of the class to employment. So we are in the downtown center. I. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, let me give you some of my contact information. Uh, if you have any or want any more information, please contact me. Uh, here's my email at the bottom. We are located at the downtown center. That's at the corner of Wilcox and El Camino Real. And just come in the front door and walk right into the to the nursing department and any of us would be happy to take you on a tour or you can email me for more questions if you have any. Does anybody have any questions? Nope. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, of course. So I do have one real quick one. You're saying that <laughs> quite literally your program is only a half a school year long. And you can go from starting out with nothing to almost certainly having a job at the end in six months? 100% guarantee that you will have a job. If you start in January, by June, 
you will be employed uh, if you start in if you start in um, August uh, by the new year you'll have you'll have your certificate and you can go on into uh, the workforce. Could you speak really quickly and maybe tell me what the average starting salary might be around Coach East? Uh, it's about anywhere from new grads minimum wage all the way up to about $12 an hour. Uh, private duty is a little bit more. So uh, if you want to hang your own shingle out and go for it, you can make probably close to $15 an hour. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Folks, we're going to switch gears a little bit and we're going to move on to EMT and paramedicine. Um, I'm going to ask Ms. Duvera to talk to you for a minute if, you, if you're ready, ma'am. Hello, everybody, and welcome uh, tonight. We have a couple of great programs here in EMS. Uh, we have the EMT program, which much like um, the CNA, it's one semester, right? So you can come in um, and in one semester, walk away with a career path. Um, it is eight credits, so it's a commitment. It is um, hard work and a lot of fun. You have to have a passion for um, caring for people and um, you know, get excited about um, getting out there and helping your community. So it does take the right type of person for that, uh, this type of uh, work, but um, now this is the great place to figure that out. Um, you can develop a lot of those fundamental skills that you would use later on if you decided to advance your career. And we can help you do that here at Cochise and take you into the paramedic program. So um, our EMT program in that class, um, they are all at night. So if you are working, um, we can um, offer you these evening classes it's Monday through Thursday. So you can either pick a Monday, Wednesday class or a Tuesday, Thursday class. They're six to 10 um, so that you can still maintain your um, job while going to school. Uh, we have a lot of resources like James pointed out of how to pay for it. Um, I'd be happy to uh, sit with you and help you figure that out if you wanna stop by uh, my office or down here at the downtown center. Um, the paramedic program is an investment in your future, right? And so this is taking your career to the next level in emergency medicine. And um, our paramedic program is three semesters long. It doesn't run the traditional track though. Some of those classes are in the summer and you finish um, halfway through the following fall. So there is an application process to the paramedic program. You apply, you take an entrance exam, and you go through an interviewing process. Um, and I'd be happy to walk you through that process as well. The EMT acceptance is very easy. Um, it is just a matter of taking the entrance test uh, we want to make sure that our students are reading at level. And when I say at level, uh, we're asking you to be able to read at a 12th grade level because that's what the textbook is written um, at. So we want you to be successful in the class from the get go. Um, and the math, we test your math skills to make sure you can do some basic math. Um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Uh, we're not talking about algebra stuff, okay? Um, some basic math, some basic reading skills um, for entrance. For the paramedic, um, we do a lot of hands-on training because now you're um, saving lives. And so um, when you are the person on the scene coming to my house to save the life of my family member, you know, we want to make sure that you are um, skilled and trained and confident and prepared. And, you know, like a lot of my colleagues here have been um, bragging about, we have 100% um, 
employment rate for our graduates as well. In fact, most of our paramedic students are employed by agencies um, as they enter the program. So, um, you know, we have we have a lot we have a lot of community support in our college programs here in EMS, which is amazing. And um, I do have like a one minute video of <laughs> something we did in lab that um, I would like to share with you. It's, um, we were working with some lungs and showing how the lungs inflate um, when um, we're providing that assistance to them. So I'm gonna share that lung video with you all. And this is um, from an animal. Okay, so uh, let me open that up real quick. That's pretty neat. We get to do a lot of fun stuff um, in labs, lots of hands on training, and um, it's, it's an amazing journey. So, you know, please um, come and, and check us out. We have a lot to offer um, anybody that might be interested. Thank you. I appreciate it. Does anybody have questions? Okay, so we're going to move on to fire science real quick. Um, Mr. Bill Wright, he's going to tell you guys something kind of amazing, I think. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Bill Wright. Um, I'm the coordinator for uh, the fire science program here at Cochise College. This class prepares students for a career in the fire and emergency services industry. Upon, success, uh, upon successful completion of 107, 108, and 109, those are the three classes, You'll have the skills necessary to complete the fire one and two certification exam through the Arizona Center for Fire Service Excellent, which is the uh, lead agency for certification in the fire service in the state of Arizona. Most drive for the certification, but it is optional. And what I mean by that is there are very few students that actually go through this program for 24 weeks and then not go ahead and, and, and shoot for their state certification we will prepare you for that certification. The class will meet two or three times a week in lectures and practical exercises, learning basic firefighting fundamentals. This course starts in October, uh, the second eight weeks with FST 107 and, when, and will end in December. FST 108 and 109 start in January and end in May with a typical college spring semester. Um, the program provides a pathway to both uh, AAS and Certificate in Fire Science Technology. Students are encouraged to work with a counselor to determine the best avenue for a degree. Combined with EMT 174, the total credits for this program is 20. There's one more advanced class that you'll take or care to take after uh, your fire science uh, certification because you'll need that to get into it is uh, fire Science uh, 115. Students should consider uh, this class to increase their employability and or promotional consideration. Like I said earlier, you must have a state certification to enroll in this course. FST 115 is a spring semester only class that educates the student in driving and pumping the apparatus in the fire service. Um, we have made in the last couple of weeks a very detailed video uh, that will be on the bottom of this of this page uh, that I hope that you will go and, and, and talk to. It also includes potentially uh, a pathway from our class certification and into employability um, with any really of the fire uh, agencies in the, in the county. Uh, but specifically on this one, we dragged in Brad Deaver, who was the assistant chief of the service fire department, and he spent some time um, uh, talking about the requirements that they need. So that's what we're about. We're about getting you into the class, getting you certified, um, along with your EMT um, classes that you'll take separate from our class, but together 
then your employability, you're ready to go out and, and search for jobs uh, in the, on, and hopefully the local community. So if there aren't any, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to help uh, uh, talk to you about it right here. Anybody have any questions? Nope. We're going to move on to our last speaker for the evening. Um, Ms. Dickie Daniels, if, ma'am, if you would talk to them about medical assistance program. Good evening. So we saved the best for last, I have to say. <laughs> so the medical assistant program is two semesters long. It's two days a week. We do lab and lecture on the same day. And medical assistants are the individuals that work in the doctor's office. So they work closely with the doctor. They um, pretty much are the doctor's right hand. Uh, they assist them with procedures like minor surgeries, mole removals, um, they do injections, they do blood draws, they do ear lavages, casting, allergy testing, uh, administer, administer medications, they educate their patients, they do vital signs. So they also get to work in specialty offices like dermatology, where they can do like mold removals, or if you have a patient that comes in that's balding and they want more hair, you get to assist the the physician to help them grow some more hair, <laughs> which is a really cool thing. You can work in cardiology. You could do EKGs in cardiology that works with the heart. You can do orthopedic surgery where you can do casting. You can do wound care at the hospital, uh, work in urgent care, which is a fast pace, a lot of fun. If you want to do something like that, if you like a, if you're an adrenaline, adrenaline junkie, you could do that. Um, medical assistants usually work a Monday through Friday job, and they usually get most of the major holidays off. Um, there's a lot of job opportunities here in Cochise County, all through the county. There's a lot of doctors that are needing medical assistance, and it can help you prepare for the nursing program if that's what you're possibly thinking about is doing the nursing program, but you're not sure. Go into the medical assistant program, and that can help prepare you for that nursing program. It's um, a great opportunity. It's a lot of fun. It can help you with any type of medical profession. Even if you wanted to maybe switch to EMS, you'll have some of that medical background, like you'll know how to do injections, you'll know medications. Um, but it, it's a great stepping stone for any type of um, adventure you wanna do in the medical program or in the medical field. So we just have a lot of fun. 17 of those credits from the medical assistant program can go towards an associate's degree as well. Um, and we are fast growing as well too. The profession is really growing fast and there's a lot of job opportunities out there. And I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, I appreciate it. Well, folks, I see we've got at least a couple of folks out there who, who stuck in until the end. Did anybody actually have any questions? No? Speaking of chat, if your chat's not open, you should probably go ahead and open it, please. Um, Ms. Martin has put in there the uh, uh, link to the Google Doc that has all these good people's contact information and highlights most of the points that they talked about. So again, folks, thank you for coming and spending your time with us. I truly appreciate it. Um, ladies and gents, thank you for your presentations this evening. I, I do appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free. Find anybody who's got a Cochise College shirt on. They're going to be willing to talk to you about Cochise College and, and find you the right person. I can guarantee it. And pretty much everybody here is, is as passionate as these folks are about making sure that, that, that A, you get here or you get somewhere and, and you become a successful student. So um, if you need help, reach out. There's always somebody here for you. Again, folks, I appreciate your time. Thank you.